Hi friends, today we are going to see some of the basic aspects of Z transforms, which comes under the subject signals and systems. Uh, this topic is very important for many of the competitive exams such as uh, gate exams and uh, engineering service. Uh, before going uh, into the topic, we see some of the uh, basic aspects of uh, transforms. What do you mean by a transform? Transform is basically a mathematical analysis. Where a signal in time domain is converted to a signal in frequency domain. Then what do you mean by a time domain and frequency domain? A signal in time domain can be represented as uh, its amplitude in y-axis and time in x-axis. This is the most common way of uh, representing a signal. But a signal which is represented in frequency domain, it has frequency in its x-axis and amplitude in y-axis. For example, like this. Then, uh, the most important application of uh, this uh, transforms where the signal from the time domain is converted to the frequency domain is uh, uh, that uh, when a signal is in a time domain it cannot be uh, mathematically ana analyzed it is very difficult to analyze uh, uh, signals with different frequencies a signal in frequency domain is very easy to analyze so uh, uh, just uh, start the transform uh, we had seen that the basics of transforms now we are going for uh, the iser transform we have two types of signals that is a uh, continuous time signal and uh, discrete time signal uh, for a continuous time signal uh, as we know continuous time signal is a signal which has uh, is amplitude in for every instance of time and a discrete time signal is a signal uh, which has values only for some discrete values um, uh, for, for continuous time signal we use Laplace transform for transforming the signal in time domain to frequency domain and for discrete time signal we use Z transform for converting a signal in time domain to frequency domain uh, there is a similarity between both of this uh, Laplace transform and Z transform that is uh, for both of the transforms uh, we use a complex input uh, to the system that means uh, for Laplace transform we use e raised to st that is uh, s is a complex number which makes this signal as complex input and uh, here s represents sigma plus j omega here it is omega and in z transform the input should be z raised to n z raised to n here z, ra z represents the complex number and n is any integer I repeat n is any integer and here z represents r e raised to j omega which is the polar form representation of a complex number
then the advantage of using this uh, complex input is that uh, if we apply a complex input to an LTI system LTI system LTI system means linear time invariant system that uh, system that uh, satisfies both linearity and time invariance a property that we will see in another class uh, when we apply an input x of t or x of n x of t for uh, continuous time system uh, continuous time signal and x of n for uh, discrete time signal and it gives an output y of t that means a continuous time output and uh, a discrete time output uh, each output will be for the corresponding input if we apply a complex input uh, the, whether it is e raised to st or uh, z raised to n uh, we get a similar complex output that is e raised to st or z raised to n with a, some changes in amplitude only some changes in amplitude this is one of the peculiarity of uh, using complex inputs uh, to a system uh, it gives the same output uh, with some changes in the amplitude uh, to here uh, we are going to discuss the z transform so we will see that in detail as we know uh, the basic equation for convolution convolution means uh, it gives the output of any system uh, if we have the input and uh, the impulse response uh, as we are going to discuss about the insert transform uh, we are taking only the discrete values uh, so here if, if the system will be discrete uh, so the input will be discrete output will be discrete and impulse response will be discrete this uh, symbol shows uh, the convolution uh, the basic uh, equation for convolution is sigma k is equal to minus infinity to infinity h of k x of n minus k here we are going to give the input x of n as z raised to n since we are considering the z transform and it is a discrete um, system is a transform it can be applicable only for the discrete systems so here we take z raised to n so which is equal to sigma k is equal to minus infinity to infinity h of k uh, for x of n is it it is is it raised to n then for x of n minus k it will become is it raised to n minus k which is equal to sigma k is equal to minus infinity to infinity h of k is it raised to n is it raised to minus k as the summation is only applicable for um, the k the variable k uh, we can take z raised to n to the so it becomes z raised to n sigma k is equal to minus infinity to infinity h of k z raised to minus k so if we are denoting this portion as h of z capital h of z this becomes z raised to n h of z here we call h of z as the z transform of h of n that is uh, h of n will be in time domain and h of z will be in frequency domain so as we see uh, we had given here the input uh, z raised to n and we got the output as z raised to n and something some other in its amplitude that's what i said in the starting that um, uh, a complex input to, to an lti system gives the same complex output with some changes in the amplitude that is uh, one of the advantage of uh, giving complex input so uh, in this transform and laplace transform we are using complex inputs uh, and here we got h of z as sigma n is equal to minus n of k k is equal to minus infinity to infinity uh, h of k is a raised to minus k if you change the variable k uh, to n it becomes sigma uh, n is equal to minus infinity to infinity 
uh, h of n is at raise to minus n this will be the is a transform of h of z that gives is a transform of h of n that gives h of z so in uh, particular we can say uh, for every signal x of n for every signal x of n its z transform can be represented as x of z capital x of z and most of the text uh, were representing the uh, signal in time domain in small letter and in frequency domain it is in capital letter uh, x of z is equal to x of n z raised to minus n sigma n is equal to minus infinity to infinity this will be the general equation for a signal uh, for a signal to find the z transform this is the now uh, let us see uh, another subtopic which comes under uh, this is in every transforms that is region of convergence region of convergence in short uh, we will call it as roc so what do you mean by roc or region of convergence is the value of here uh, already we had seen uh, that uh, for is a transform uh, there is uh, a signal if we, if we are giving given a signal x of n we will get this a transform as x of z is equal to sigma n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n is a raised to minus n so sigma n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n is not raised to minus n so uh, the region of convergence uh, is an uh, is uh, the values of z values of z values of this z which makes x of z to converge x of z to converge Uh, to say it uh, it means convergence means uh, it gives a finite value for all the values of uh, for whatever the values of z which, which gives x of z as uh, the uh, finite value that uh, that means it does not uh, goes to infinity uh, that values are known as region of convergence uh, as we know z is re raised to j omega where it is a polar form representation of a complex number also it is a representation of a circle which with radius r <coughs> with radius r uh, if uh, r is equal to 1 uh, then um, this z gives a unit circle means uh, the region region of convergence will also will be a circle so uh, if we uh, consider uh, a, a right sided signal uh, that means a signal with uh, all its values uh, greater than 0 and greater than equal to 0 that means like this 0 1 2 3 4 like this uh, that means it does not have any values uh, on the negative side so the region of convergence for a right sided signal uh, will be uh, situated or located outside the circle of a, a radius say radius a that means the region of convergence will come like that uh, this will be the circle of radius a and the region of convergence will be outside that that means uh, for all the values of z greater than a uh, x of z will be finite and uh, for uh, this is one condition that is for right sided signal that is n greater than equal to 0 and greater than equal to 0 uh, next condition is for left sided signal left sided signal 
here n uh, will be less than or less than equal to zero uh, that means uh, signal will go like this starts from zero and go towards the infinity minus one minus two minus three minus infinity that means it it have no sequence on uh, the positive side these type of signal are known as left sided signal uh, here the region of convergence will be uh, inside the circle of a particular radius uh, say a radius a uh, so here we can give the region of convergence as is it less than a uh, that makes x of z finite finite so here uh, the region of convergence will be inside the circle of radius a now the third case is both sided signal both sided signal means uh, as the name says you can understand it uh, the sequence should uh, sequence present in uh, both the sides in the positive side and the negative side like this I am just drawing an arbitrary signal arbitrary signal so in this it, it can vary from positive uh, towards positive infinity and negative infinity uh, here the region of convergence will be uh, between uh, two circles say a circle of radius a and uh, a circle of radius b and for instance it comes like uh, this a and another circle comes like this it will be b so uh, the region of convergence will be a uh, between uh, these two circles that means it will be here so all the values uh, of z that comes between a and b uh, makes x of z converge x of z converge and for all other values x of z becomes infinity so the regional convergence for both sided signals will be between two circles so we call it a day and i'll be back uh, with such similar videos thank you